Meisner makers, it's Wednesday, it's one o'clock, and you know what that means, Wednesday workshops at one. So Jody and I are here together to walk you through what I think is a super cute um, and actually multi-seasonal table runner project, fe project featuring embroidered machine applique and also some in the hoop quilting. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through, when I say we, I mean Jody is gonna take <laughs> you through the stitch out of one of the blocks and she's gonna talk to you about the construction, the way the pattern is written for you to put this table run together, table runner together. This particular project is the Hearts and Swirls Design Collection from Sweet Pea and we will include the um, the website information for you if you want to go there and download this project these project instructions and designs as well and they're available for four uh five by seven up through eight by twelve hoops so pretty much anyone with an embroidery machine is going to be able to stitch this out now if a you are still working with a machine that has a four by four hoop keep stay with us there's information in here that still will be appropriate for you um, some tips on embroidery that kind of thing if you don't yet have an embroidery machine still stay with us because there are some quilting techniques that we're going to talk a little bit about and you know you just might not know what you're missing yet if you are a traditional machine applique artist and how many of you out there Still stitching satin stitch, driving the machine. Uh, this is a just a way for you to perhaps enhance your uh, machine applique techniques is by seeing how your embroidery machine can do that for you. And it's faster. And it's faster. <laughs> and you can be multitasking, you know, all oh, about yes. multitasking. Yes. Have one running with the embroidery and have another one where I'm doing it the, what I call the old fashioned way. Well, or, or sewing over here as you're constructing this over here. Exactly. Okay, so here is um, the colorway that Jody came up with. We'll show you some another variation when we get towards the wrap up after we do the first stitch out. So bare basic needs for stitching this table runner. We need the Sweet Pea Hearts and Swirls design collection. Mm -hmm. We need some stabilizer, and I think we are going to have differing opinions yes. on which stabilizer mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. just goes to show you that the more stabilizer knowledge that you have you're going to find there's no right and wrong answer uh, different stabilizers can you can be used for different techniques it's not necessarily that you have to use this particular stabilizer mm -hmm. or your project is going to explode right there's different different stabilizers for the same technique um, then we're so you need stabilizer you need the design collection you will need some fabric and you will need some batting and you will need some applique scissors for trimming and thread and thread yes um the one other thing that is a nice to have it's not a necessary to have is you will notice that these are as i mentioned applique designs now i would not suggest cutting the swirl out using my AccuQuilt just because it's kind of shifty and maybe the skin what did I say? AccuQuilt. Oh, I wouldn't use my AccuQuilt for it either. <laughs> the skin I, cut. I wouldn't use the skin I cut either for this swirly part, uh, mainly because it's just a little difficult, I think, to handle that kind of a shape. But the hearts would be perfect to cut with your skin and cut. Um, and in a future edition of Workshop Wednesday, we'll show you how to create those files for the skin and cut so that you don't have to trim while you're at the machine. So I think. I think we're ready. Are you missing anything? Nope. I have all of my tools that I need, and okay. I'll talk about them as I'm stitching out. And um, I'm ready to go. All right. Are we ready, cameraman Joel? Yeah, let's go. Let's embroider. Okay, so now I have my fabric ready. So let me explain to you what I have. I have a piece of black batting. I have my background fabric. Here is my swirl. Here is my large heart. Here is my small heart. I am going to stitch out three of block one and two of block two. So it's best to just try to cut all this at once. That way you can just, you know, get finished with one and then just start with the next one and then until you get all five of them done. So with that being said, I am now going to get this ready. I'm going to uh, get my placement stitch ready, get, get it tacked down, and we're going to go ahead and start stitching this out. I'll be right back. So I have done my placement line. 
And now I have my batting on here and I'm going to do a tack down line. On this particular des design, they give you two ways of putting your batting in. So how I'm gonna do it is, is I need to redo my first stitch twice. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back one to my very first stitch. And I am now going to tack this down because it only gave me a placement and a tack down and that tack down included the fabric. But I wanna be able to cut my fabric my batting away without my fabric being on top. It's a little bit easier. So that's why I'm doing the first stitch twice. Okay, so now that I've tripped my batting away, I am now gonna take and put my piece of background fabric on and I'm going to center it over the batting. I'm going to make sure that I have at least a half an inch all the way around on all sides. I'm going to put some tape on it. Kind of keep it in position. Now I don't have to worry about getting my fingers in there. And now I'm going to stitch out the quilting lines. So this is gonna take about 13, well, it says one minute. I don't think so. I think it's gonna take longer than that. Okay, so it has now finished doing all the background stippling. So the next thing is, is I've changed my thread to green and I am going to do my placement line. I'm gonna do the spiral first. It has now finished my placement line, and now I'm going to put my fabric up here. And I want to make sure that I have fabric that comes out below that flat stitch right there, because we need to leave fabric in this area in the seam. So I'm just going to tape this down. And now I'm going to sew my placement line or my tack down line, <laughs> the next line. We all get confused sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like placement, tack down, swirl. Okay, so it has finished doing the tack down. And now the next thing we need to do is take your favorite pieces of applique scissors. And if you don't have a favorite uh, applique scissors already, we do have a really nice assortment of applique scissors uh, that comes in this cutting kit. And I am now going to trim this all the way. As you can tell, this would be impossible to trim with this still being uh, attached to the sewing machine. So I am going to remove the hoop from the machine and trim this away and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I have trimmed it away and you'll notice that there's little pieces of fiber. So I like to work with these little tiny guy, uh, lip brush rollers. I always have a couple of them hanging around when I'm doing mach uh, machine applique. And also notice I did keep this piece long. This needs to go into the seam allowance. So we don't want, you wanna make sure that you have that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my satin stitch and finish that off. And for the two hearts, you're gonna do it exactly the same way. You're gonna use your, uh, change your thread. You're gonna do a placement stitch, put your fabric down. You're gonna do a tack down stitch. You're gonna trim away your excess fabric and then do your satin stitch. Then you're gonna go on and do your last heart, placement stitch, tack down stitch, trim away your excess fabric, do your satin stitch. And then it is going to do all of your little wild hearts in whatever color that you want. And then that is um, all there is to completing one block. And you'll need to do five of these. Again, you'll need to do three of block one and two of block two. But if you wanna make it longer, there's nothing that says that you can't make more blocks or less blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my satin stitch. Okay, so now it has finished the satin stitch all the way around on the spiral. So it is now ready to go on and do the big heart first. And again, it will do your placement line, your tack down line. You'll trim away your fabric and it will then do a satin stitch. When it's done with that one, it will come back over here and do the smaller one. It will do a placement line a tack down line where you're going to trim away your excess fabric. It will do the satin stitch and it then will go all the way over and do your last stitch out, which is the solid hearts. And this block will be completely done. We're, the process stays the same for the last two blocks. And uh, we'll just see you at the end of when you've done this block. So with the magic of sewing this ahead of time, I have now, I have four of my blocks together and I, and I will finish off the other one. You need to now take and trim each one of your blocks from that first stitch line, one half inch. Then you're going to take and cut your borders according to what size design you're doing. Again, I'm doing the six by 10, so mine are four and a half by 12 and I'm going to put right sides together, at, at, pretending I have all five here, right sides together, and I'm centering that down, and then I'm gonna take my piece of batting and lay that down, and I'm gonna sew one half inch, and I'm going to flip it over, and I'm gonna press the seam open. And I'm gonna do that to the other side, and I'm gonna do it then, trim this up, so that it's equal to the, the runner. It's all nice and square. I am going to then do the long side the same way I did the other two sides. Then I am going to top stitch about a quarter inch on the red fabric all the way around. You can do your two ends first and then come along and do your, your two long ends, whichever, whichever way you wanna do it is fine. The instructions say to do one end and one end and then do the two long ends. I would like to point out that when I was sewing 
these together. Uh, it's really kind of close right here and right here. So when your foot hits it, it has a tendency to move. So what I did was is I pinned my edges together like this. I just took the pin and went, huh, totally they're not the right way to pin. And I didn't pull them out until I got close to sewing. But when I came to this edge here and this edge here, I held it kind of close so that it didn't have a chance to move. And I did my stitching about one to two inches over, or inches, stitches over from where that placement and that, that tack down line is so that it didn't end up in this, it ended up in the seam and not in the seam. Okay, so after you have all four sides down, you have them pressed and top stitched out, you then are gonna cut a piece of fabric the full size of what all that is. You've got three and a half inches here, you've had three and a half inches here, and on both sides if you're doing a six by 10. So get it all laid out. And this is what I was thinking about putting on my back, because this kind of reminds me of a picnic, and so does this fabric. So you make this the same size as everything with the borders. You're going to stitch half inch all the way around and you're gonna leave about five inches open at one end. You're gonna turn it inside out. You're gonna take a chopstick or a uh, turning tool and you're gonna poke out your corners. You're gonna press it really nicely. And at that point, you can um, do some more stitching on the borders if you want, or you can take and stitch in the ditch where your seams came together and they and, and you stitched in the ditch right here on your white using your, your stitch in the ditch. It's kind of at this point, it's like whatever you wanna do. I am going to take and put all my borders on, cut my fabric a little bit bigger, and I am actually going to quilt in another episode. I'm gonna show you how I use my luminaire to quilt in the border all the way around. And then I'm gonna put binding on my edge. So I'm not actually going to do the, sew the edge and turn it inside out. I'm gonna play around with my luminaire and um, they have a feature on there the way you can do your borders on your sewing machine. And so we'll, sh we'll be showing you that in another episode. But that finishes it up. You have, each one of these take a little about an hour I did all of these in one afternoon, um, got down to the last one that I was trimming, got down to the fourth edge to trim, and I trimmed the wrong line. So this is why we had an extra one for me to do today. But um, it was really a lot of fun. It was really pretty fast. And so I hope you enjoy seeing the project that we, that, uh, we did this week. Thank you, Jody, for walking our newer embroiderers through mm -hmm. how to get started with applique in the hoop. Wasn't that super, super easy? Love it. So the technique that you saw is um, a trim in place method, which is always appropriate. It always works. But if you remember at the very beginning, we talked about the scan and cut and the option of using that for shapes like the hearts or you know other shapes when you wanna be able to pre-cut versus having to get back in there and trim. If you are using a um, pre-cut technique, regardless of what type of an applique project, not just this applique project, but you will want to remember to use some type of an adhesive underneath. Mm -hmm. um, this is applique, these are applique wonder sheets. I like them because they're a nice, easy to use, convenient size. And you would simply press your fabric to one side. You're gonna cut it using your digital die cutter, otherwise known as a scan and cut. And then you would have a little bit of adhesive to after that stitching line is placed where Jody showed you earlier. You would then put your pre-cut piece in place, remove your hoop from the machine, do not remove your fabric from the hoop, and give it a gentle press and that holds your applique shape in place. So that's really kind of a nice um, thing to have on hand. Now Jody, remind me, which stabilizers did you use on your project? Well, I used the uh, poly mesh. I like to do a lot of my projects with the poly mesh because it doesn't become so bulky. Mm -hmm. And I knew because this was gonna have stabilizer in it and a back, I didn't want that much bulk in it. 
But the thing with stabilizer, when you use the poly mesh, it shrinks. Mm -hmm. So you always want to make sure that you steam it. And just by taking your iron and not on the poly mesh, but just above it and steam it, let it shrink up and then go ahead and hoop it and stitch away. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people say, well, I use poly mesh and I did my embroidery and I, and I ironed it and it shrunk up and it's all yeah. wrinkly. The reason why you didn't pre-shrink the poly mesh. Yeah. So not all poly meshes, from what I understand, people say it doesn't shrink. I have not met one yet that did. So well, and it takes two seconds to steam your, your absolutely. Sheet of poly mesh. So you absolutely know, better to do it and not have to worry mm -hmm. about it. So I went a different route mm -hmm. with mine, and I used a tearaway stabilizer. Um, not for any special reason other than when you're doing applique, if you're doing it at your sewing machine the traditional way, a tearaway stabilizer would be fine, right? That's probably what we would grab, which I'm sure was my my carefully thought out decision to go with a tearaway stabilizer. And the design is not super heavy, so the tearaway is just fine. I like this one. This is um, fusible, dissolve away, tearaway. I didn't fuse anything to it. There wasn't a need, but I like the crispness and I like the fact that over time, if there's anything left in that tear away, because I don't want to spend hours and hours picking tear away out, it'll dissolve, right? And be removed from, you know, no longer be there in my project. So that was the, the stabilizer that I chose. Now this is the Embellish brand. This is um, the same thing or very similar under the Floriani brand. It's a stitch and watch stitch and wash. It is also a fusible water soluble tear away. So even if you're not fusing anything in place, um, you've got that nice crispness. You can pull it away when your embroidery is completed and any remaining fibers, especially if there's text involved, you don't want to have to go pick all of that stabilizer out from around your text. This will dissolve away over time when you wash the project. And there are times when I use poly mesh and tear away on yep. the back of it. Yes, it is perfectly allowable yeah. and sometimes it's necessary. Yes, because if it's uh, something that you want to hang mm -hmm. and you, you know, you want the poly mesh, but you also need a little bit of stability. Yes. I, I will use tear away on the back of it and yep. it, it does a beautiful job. And I love it, um, tear away for my decorative stitches. So it's always good to have a tear away yes. in hand. So Jody also walked you through how to finish the project up according to the instructions. Um, I, you know, I, to be honest, got tired of embroidering blocks. Oh no, a little bit of honesty here on <laughs> Workshop Wednesday. And as I was laying the first couple of them out, I thought, you know, these are kind of fun and I didn't want to make another pillow. So I'm like, what, what can I do with this? How can I make it just a little bit different? Now, had I had unlimited embroidery time, I think that this would just make a beautiful baby quilt, right? Even if you oh, started yeah. with this section, and then I like kind of that modern um, aesthetic and I would probably the rest of the baby quilt just go with the same white solid. So it's just going to be like one stripe of something else that's going on. Uh, so that was one thought that I had or alternating this. I like the two blocks together so it's a little bit more squared you know, and using that alternating it with a solid and doing like a giant nine patch type, you know, a, Embroidered solid, embroidered solid. I was gonna, I was gonna play around and do a four patch, yeah, and yeah. have them go in different directions, yep, yep. and so it would be a table mat. I spent I more time really, playing with them. Going, yes, it was very it, versatile. It was. I loved it, yeah. uh, and the colorations too. You know, play with different fabrics so that it fits your decor and it fit, it doesn't have to be seasonal. You yes. Know, sometimes yep. we look at hearts and we're like, oh, it must be for Valentine's Day. But depending on the fabric that you choose, it could be anything. Um, the other thing I thought about doing, and I know you're dying because you got inspired, <laughs> yeah. uh, is I thought about coming back with my skin and cut and cutting the kids, the grandchildren's <sighs> names and heat setting their names on the hearts. That'd be fun. Ooh. If you had them do signatures, uh -huh. and, oh, that would be really, yep. really cute. Yep. But we all know that there's a couple of seasons that I like the best out of everything. Yes. So, you know, my next one actually is going to be 4th of July, but my really cool one is going to be I don't uh, know. Oh, Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> you have to stitch that one up for show yes. and tell. Please do a block for next yeah. time. So what I really am going to do with this is make a table runner. And I have a, a large table in my dining room area. And I ran out of time before it was Wednesday again. So what I'm going to do in this area, rather than adding embroidery, is just come back through with some very simple straight line quilting, very close together, otherwise known as matchstick quilting. 
It is nothing fancier than taking your walking foot and running close together rows of straight stitching. Uh, I think I'm gonna go this way. If I were smart, I would go this way because then I don't have to worry about turning my piece at all because my ends of the stitching, my turnaround points are gonna be caught up in the binding. But I really think that I'm gonna like the look of it going this way instead. So I'll stitch down, I'll stitch in the ditch, I'll come back up, stitch in the ditch, come back down. Um, so if you're wondering, okay, what is that matchstick quilting that you're talking about? Oh, but before we get there. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna trim it and bias bind it. Um, any bias binding technique will work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I thought that this really did need bias binding on it, not, you know, sewn in and then turned inside yeah. out. No, I just, um, it was just such a little thickness to it. Yeah, and it was just such a fun project. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, it reminds me of a picnic. I actually yeah, have black, I, I love that. red and white polka dot fabric that I'm thinking about. That might go on the edge too. I haven't decided yet. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get a close up in a minute, cameraman Joel, of match stick quilting, which again is just those row after row after row of lines that are run straight stitch lines that are running parallel to each other. So any machine can do this. Um, the key is you want to keep them, you know, closer than a quarter of an inch together. Quarter of an inch would be about, I think, as wide as I would go. Um, and making sure that you're staying straight and you're staying aligned. Don't get a caught up if you know they start to shift just a little bit there's so many lines in here that if one or two are slightly off just recalibrate yourself and keep right on going okay so that is match stick quilting it's a great technique isn't that fun yes now if you're looking at this pillow and wondering oh, that looks like a lot of fun you're right it was so <laughs> this particular pillow you're seeing a preview of coming attractions would you mind holding this we have to do all right we have ready for you to pre-order. This is the only one in the building at the moment, isn't it? Right? Wow. Good things come in large boxes and good things come in Tiffany blue boxes. So <laughs> this is the spring license to create kit. And in here are over $700 of um, embellished product and project instructions. And we'll tell you more about that at another time. It's not for Wednesday. But this is one of the projects that's in there. Uh, this is a super, super fun and easy uh, raw edge applique technique that's held in place by all of those rows of matchbox quilting, a little embroidery over the top. And of course, my favorite way to add lettering at the moment is with my skin and cut um, and some heat set vinyl. How fun is that? That is very cool. cool. A, yeah, a cork, cork over here. here. Yes. Yeah, so really awesome. a nice multi um, dimensional piece. It is a pillow. That's okay. Lots of Love technique. It. You could also um, clip it right and hang it as a little wall hanging. Totally up to you. So that is today's edition of Workshop Wednesday at 1. We are so glad that you were here. We can't wait to see you next time. Bye.